Good morning. I am Susan Redhead. I pray that you are all doing well this morning and that you continue to lean on the everlasting arm of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This morning's devotion is from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 8. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, we hallow your name this morning. You are the creator and giver of life. And we give you praise and thanks for the dawn of this new day. We give you thanks for keeping us and for your grace and mercies that are new every day. Father, we consecrate ourselves to you so that you can make us wholly thine. We lay our plans at your feet, sanctify them and sanctify us so that all that we do and say will be according to your will, to the honor and glory of your great name. This we pray in Jesus' name. Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 8 reads, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pleasing, whatever is pure, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. The common theme throughout Paul's letter to the Philippians is a call to rejoice, to rejoice in the Lord. When Paul wrote this letter, he was not in a good place. He was in prison, but he lived in a good place, that is, in Christ. And so he was able to rejoice. Paul encourages us to rejoice in the Lord always. Always mean, meaning continually. We are called to continually rejoice in the Lord despite our circumstances. Yes, even in our current situation of COVID-19, of unemployment, of sickness, of death, of confusion, of racial division, and the list can go on, we are called to rejoice in the Lord. We are not rejoicing in our circumstances or our achievements but we are rejoicing in Christ, in what Christ has done and is doing for us. We are rejoicing in his power and might, in his majesty and glory, in his faithfulness and mercy, in his grace and forgiveness. We are rejoicing because he is our all-sufficient God. We are called to trust him, to look beyond our circumstances and to look to him to praise and worship despite despite our circumstances, to rejoice in life even if life is imperfect and things are not as we expected or hope. One writer said, and I quote, Rejoicing is a safeguard, a safety latch on our mental health, our emotional stability, and our relational health, unquote. So even if our circumstances are not good, we rejoice in the Lord, for he is good. For our situation does not have to be good for us to remember that God is good. Paul didn't say that we should not feel sad or grieve, but encourages us to trust in God in the midst of our grief and in the midst of our sadness. He encourages us to make it a discipline to rejoice in the Lord because of his goodness. I know that due to the current pandemic, many have lost jobs. Some have become fearful and have isolated themselves. Some can only see a bleak future. Some may have lost loved ones or have a loved one who is sick. I would like to encourage you this morning to take your eyes off the storms in your lives that threaten to engulf you through these circumstances and look to the one who can calm the storm. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. 
God loves when we rejoice in Him and offer songs of praise and adoration to Him. We rejoice because our life stories are not, have not been written by men, but by God who wants only good things for His children. Therefore, in the face of unemployment, He reminds us that He can supply all our needs according to His riches and glory, and so we rejoice. In the face of sickness, we are reminded that God is the great healer, the great physician, who heals all our diseases, and we rejoice. In the face of doubt, despair, and fear, we are reminded that he did not give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, and of love, and of self-discipline, and we rejoice. In the face of death, we are reminded that he has already conquered death, and that he will come again to raise us from the dead, and so we rejoice. Paul went on to remind the Philippians, as he is reminding us today, that the Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your requests be made known to, to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. My sisters and brothers, our circumstances may not be ideal, and this is why I would like to encourage us to seek God, to abide in Him, to pray unceasingly, bringing our requests to Him, for He promises us a peace that will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. You need not take on a burden that Christ is willing to bear for you, if you will only give it to Him. We live in troubling times, but we do not have to be troubled by the times, for God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth should change. I leave you with these words from Philippians 4.8. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Have a blessed and spirit-filled day. Temptations on every hand Though Satan's tried To stop me And to place my feet On sinking sand Through the pain And all of my sorrows Through the tears And all of my fears the Lord was there to keep me, for He's kept me in the midst of it all. Not because I've been so faithful, not because I've always obeyed.
gets me. Jesus gets me. I thought I could do it on my own, but Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus. 